Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my presentation. The title of my work is Pick the Moment, Identifying Critical Pedagogical Decisions Using Long Short Term Rewards. First, let's look at this simple grid world environment. There are three actions, up, down, and left. When you hit the reward state, you are forced to move left. This design aims to avoid you collect the reward again and again. If the goal is to collect as much rewards as possible, can you identify the critical states? Here, the critical states refers to the ones that different actions would have great impact on the final outcomes. You need to take the optimal action on these states. Otherwise, you may miss the positive one reward or fall into the negative one reward. These are all the critical states. You may observe some patterns that the states close to the reward are often critical. But how about these two? They are far from the rewards, but they are critical. If you move left on these two states, you will miss a lot of rewards. So it is very hard to find all critical states in a long trajectory of decisions. Therefore, our research question is, given a long trajectory of decisions, how to automatically identify critical decisions that lead to the desired outcomes. Based on our results, we believe that in order to identify critical decisions, we need to separate what we call critical states from critical decisions. Critical states are those states where different actions can cause very different outcomes. And critical decisions refers to the fact that on the critical states, the optimal action with the highest Q value should be carried out. In the following, we will show you that we need to separate these two tasks, identify critical states and make critical decisions. In this work, we propose and evaluate a long short term rewards framework to identify critical decisions. Next, I will describe it in details. This is the outline of my talk. I will start with reinforcement learning and two types of reward. Reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning technique that learns from the agent environment interaction process. For example, at any moment, the agent observes the environment state S, and then it takes an action A, and then receives a reward R, and the environment state evolves into the next state S prime. In reinforcement learning, the optimal policy is a mapping from the state to action, which uses the Q values to determine what is the best action to take for any given state. Q values are defined as the expected rewards if the agent takes the action A at state S and follows the optimal policy to the end. When inducing optimal policy, it can be seen as updating the Q values through Bellman equation until converge. In Bellman equation, the Q value is updated by the immediate reward plus a discount factor gamma times the, ma the maximum Q value in the next state S prime. Like most of the machine learning methods, reinforcement learning is originated from animal and human behavior studies. In recent years, the rising of computational neuroscience allows researchers to treat the brain as a supercomputing machine and a lot of studies have shown that many key area signals exist in the brain during decision-making and learning process. More specifically, animals and humans utilize something like Q values and reward functions to make decisions. Next, I will show how they can be used in reinforcement learning framework. A lot of research have applied Q-value difference as a heuristic value to measure the importance of state. The Q-value difference is defined as the maximum Q-value minus the minimum Q-value for a given state. For example, in this graph, the Q-value difference for state S2 is 19, while the Q-value difference for state S1 is just 1. Obviously, state S2 is more important because if you take a wrong action on S2, then you will lose 19 rewards. However, Q-value difference only considers the long-term rewards, but ignores the short-term benefits. For example, in this simple MDP, when applying Q-value difference to identify critical states, S2 and S3 are critical, but S1 is not critical. 
This is because if the agent takes all the optimal action on S2 and S3, it can always get the reward. However, real-world applications are stochastic, and oftentimes there is time constraints or step constraints, so it's important to get the reward as soon as possible. Therefore, S1 is critical and can be identified by the immediate reward. For example, for a state, if any action could result in a large positive immediate reward, then it is critical. To summarize, in our long short-term rewards framework, the long-term rewards is the Q-value difference from RL policy, and the short-term rewards is the immediate reward. It is important to note that we identify one set of critical states using long-term rewards, and similarly, we identify another set of critical states using short-term rewards. The final critical states are the union of the two sets. Also, based on our framework, on the critical states, the agent should take the optimal action, while on the non-critical states, the agent can take any actions. However, the Q-value difference in the long-term rewards are calculated based on the assumption that the agent will carry out the optimal policy all the way to the end. Therefore, by not taking the optimal actions on the non-critical states, we violate the Q-value assumptions in the Bellman equation. In order to take the random actions on the non-critical states into consideration, we need to modify the Bellman equations. Next, I will describe the original and our modified Bellman equation. As mentioned earlier, this is the original Bellman equation. It is the basic block of solving reinforcement learning that all the classic algorithms apply it to induce the optimal policy. Given the recent success of deep reinforcement learning, in this work, we applied deep RL to induce the optimal policy. Deep Q network is a version of Q learning that uses neural network to approximate the Q values for each state action pairs. It is a model-free method that learns from state, action, reward, next state tuples. During training, it aims to minimize the difference between the predicted Q and the target Q. In our modified Bellman equation, to consider the fact that the critical policy will be if the state is critical, it takes the optimal action. But if the state is non-critical, it can select any action. Therefore, we split the original Bellman equation into two equations. For critical states, it follows the original Bellman equations. For non-critical states, it uses the average Q values among all the actions. Then, we propose a critical DQN which applies the modified Bellman equation in the original DQN. This is the pseudocode of the critical DQN. First, we initialize Q values as the immediate reward. Then, we calculate the Q-value difference for each state and get the medium threshold in the training dataset to classify states into critical or non-critical. Finally, we apply the modified Bellman equation to update the neural network. Next is the experiment on the grid world game. This is the grid world environment. Note that the reward function is state action state. It means that only enters the reward state alone with black arrow, the agent can get the reward. Otherwise, the agent doesn't receive the reward. In order to evaluate the critical decisions, our critical policy functions as for critical states, it takes the optimal action, while for non-critical states, it takes the random actions. So there are two aspects in the critical policy identifying critical states, and making critical decisions. Based on the rewards used for identifying critical states and the policy used for making critical decisions, we have six critical policies in our experiment. In order to induce the critical policy, we collected the training data by taking random actions on two environment settings. Then, we applied a neural network to infer the immediate reward and also we keep the real immediate reward to compare. Finally, we have four training datasets, which is a two-by-two -two combination between the two types of environment settings and two types of immediate rewards. 
Once the policy is induced, a key thing for identifying critical state is to choose a threshold on the long short term rewards. The left graph shows the distribution of the two types of immediate rewards in the training data set based on the elbows. We set the threshold for the short term rewards as the positive and the negative 0.5. The right graph shows the distribution of Q-value difference. In the experiment, we explore different thresholds. In general, as the thresholds move from left to right, more states will be identified as critical, and more decisions will be carried out following the policy, and in turn, the policy performance will be better. This is the experimental results. The x-axis shows the percentage of critical states identified based on the corresponding policy in the training dataset. The y-axis shows the average reward received by each critical policy through online evaluation. As expected, across all the four figures, there is a general trend that the more critical states, the better the policy performs. When comparing the solid lines with the dashed lines, the long short term rewards is better than the long term rewards. When comparing the critical DQN with original DQN, the red and the blue lines are always above the green line. It means that the critical DQN is better than the original DQN in terms of identifying critical states. However, different from the simulation environment, a major concern for RL in real world application is data efficiency. So, we investigated the data efficiency for the critical DQN. This graph shows the performance of the critical policy with different size of training dataset. In the graph, when the training dataset is less than 600 trajectories, the critical DQN policy performs worse than the original DQN policy. But when there are enough data, the critical DQN policy performs similar with the original DQN policy. The result shows that critical DQN needs more data to converge to optimal policy. Next is the experiment on Peronis dataset. This is the interface of Peronis Tutor. Peronis is a web-based intelligent tutoring system for probability. It covers 10 major principles of probability, such as the complement theorem and the Bayesian rules. To induce critical policy, our training dataset contains more than 1,000 students from six semesters. The state contains 142 features. There are three actions, work example, problem solving, and step decisions. In work example, student observes how the tutor solves a problem. In problem solving, the student solves the problem. In step decisions, student solves a portion of steps in a problem while the tutor shows how to solve the others. The reward is normalized learning gain. In this experiment, we applied per decision important sampling to evaluate the performance of the critical policies. This is the results. First, the general trend is still hold that the more critical states, the better the policy performs. When more than 40% states are critical, the red line policy performs best, which applies the critical DQN to identify critical states and original DQN to make critical decisions. Then we explore the critical decisions in each problem by setting the threshold at uh, 50%. The x-axis is the 10 problems in Pyronis and sorted in chronological order, and the y-axis is the percentage of critical decisions in the corresponding problem. It shows that the long-term rewards focus on the critical decisions in the early stage, while the short-term rewards focus on the critical decisions in the late stage. This reflects that the long-term and short-term rewards complement each other. Next is conclusions. From the results, we learned that modified Bellman equation is effective to identify critical states but the critical DQA needs more data to converge to optimal policy. Carry out 50% critical decisions alone could be as effective as a fully executed policy. That's all, thank you.